Hi, in this video we will talk about gear lubrication simulation and obviously gear lubrication is of key importance because what you want to do is make sure your mechanical loss are minimum. You also want to make sure that as the gear rotate the tear teeth do not get uh, damaged and as you can see in the picture here which is a fire caused by overheated oil in the wind turbine gearbox you want to avoid overheating but also you want to make sure your system is well designed so you minimize churning losses. Now before we start in the simulation I actually wanted to show you what we will simulate and here you see an animation of a gearbox with four gears rotating and the motion of the oil. The oil is actually here shown in blue. And you can really see the gears rotating, the four gears rotating, and the oil being entrained by the gears and obviously the oil lubricating the system. Now first we look at the geometry. Here is actually the gearbox, but of course we're interested in the fluid that is inside the gearbox. And that is what you can see here where we actually have a view inside of the gearbox system. And of course the key component, the gears, and here you can see in this system we have actually four gears in the gearbox. Now that we have the geometry, let's mesh it. And the first thing I wanted to show you is this special region around the teeth of the gears and that will actually help us make a good mesh around the teeth and make sure the teeth geometry is well resolved. Now I know you actually want to see this mesh so let's dive into the mesh. What I will do here is actually have the mesh and if you want cut it in half to have a good view inside of the mesh. So here we go cut it in half and here you can see the nice mesh that was created. However you may be wondering hey where is the mesh around the gear so let's do a little bit more manipulation and take a look at that actually. I want to show you an other view where you can actually see the mesh around the gears and you can see that each of the gears is nicely resolved so that's for one set of gears but obviously you can uh, look have a look into the mesh the way you want here is another way to look at the other gear and its uh, meshing and here we go there's another gear that was mesh. So you see really high quality mesh. And here is another view I wanted to show you. If you remember the region we isolated when we uh, looked at the geometry, you can see it here again and that will be extremely useful because as the gear rotate the geometry changes obviously and we will have to do some remeshing but the key here is that we'll only do the remeshing in the region showed in gray purple and we actually not going to remesh the entire geometry and that will save us a lot of time so that is one of the key reasons where we actually why we actually defined those region in the geometry stage now here is what it looks inside uh, Fluent and here we are actually looking at the section that will be uh, rotating where we'll have to set up uh, uh, moving meshes and also uh, deforming meshes. So what we will do is actually first create all the interface, the interface between the rotating part, the gear, and the part that we're going to stay fix the rest of the volume inside the gearbox. And as you can see, it's very easy to define all those interface. And once the interface are defined, what I will do is actually go into the moving and deforming mesh uh, options and I will actually set up the different uh, moving and deforming meshes. Now the dynamic mesh I will be using the smoothing and remeshing option. Of course remeshing because we need to remesh in the area where the gears are in contact 
So let's take a look in the settings. Uh, smooth thing, I will be using the Spring Laplace Boundary Layer option. I'm not doing any layering. And on the remeshing front, I'm using the two and a half dimension option because of the geometry. And I will set up some parameters which are related again to the geometry. Now some more insight into how we set up these deforming meshes, again deforming in the area where the teeth of the gears are located. Very simple, just set the deforming meshes. However, what we also do at the same time is we can have set the different motions of the gears. And that's actually extremely easy to do where we could input uh, a rigid body motion, we can enter the location of the center of gravity, the orientation of the center of gravity, etc. And a very simple UDF is actually used to uh, set up the motion and define the motion. Now what I like to do after all that to make sure I didn't do any mistake is actually preview the motion of the gear. I'm gonna do it on 100 motion, record a picture every uh, five motion and that will actually help me ensure that everything is set up correctly. Next step, setting up the VOF uh, model or the multiphase model. VOF stands for volume of fluid and obviously here we will have two phases, oil and air. We set up the volume of fluid, we choose the explicit method which is actually the default, so very straight, uh, very straightforward. What I wanted to show you now as well is actually how we define the, the phase. And that is also very simple, but what I, what I really want to make sure you understand is as far as defining the air or the oil phase, you can really define your own property. That's very important for the oil properties because there are many different types of oils that exist out there. So as you can see here, we can define the oil uh, density and viscosity. However, some of you may have a density that varies as a function of temperature, if the temperature changes a lot, and you can see that you have a lot of different ways to set up uh, viscosity that would depend on temperature, for example. Last but not least, I do solve the simulation. I'm using a transient model. I'm using a fixed time step, the same time step I used in the preview. I'm going to do a large number of time steps so you can actually have a nice animation. And here you have it. We actually started the animation from the initial condition and you see the gears actually turning. You can clearly see the his tooth in the gear and you can see the oil being entrained. You can see the oil splashing also on the surface of the gearbox. It's really a nice animation that, that's created and uh, I want you to see really, you can really see the structure and all the oil droplets and how they behave, etc. If you want to know more, we have a lot of tutorial at your disposal to actually learn how to do the simulations.